your smartphones with you this morning. It should be also up on the screen. And read to us from the Gospel according to Matthew, Matthew the 27th chapter. I'm going to read these two verses for us, verses 47 through 49. When some of the bystanders heard it, they said, This man is calling for Elisha. At once, one of them ran and got a sponge, filled it with sour wine, put it on a stick, and gave it to him to drink. But the other said, Wait, let's see whether Elijah will come to save him. Wait, let's see whether Elijah will come to save him. This is the word of God for you, the people of God. Thanks be to God. Why don't you bow with me now for a word of prayer. God, we thank you now for bringing us to this sermonic moment in our worship. We pray, O oh God, that you would continue to open up the windows of heaven. O oh God, that you would send out a blessing that is so great that we cannot even conceive of all that you were doing. We thank you for all that we've already been able to do in this place this morning. Thank you, God, for our men and the way that they have ushered us into your presence. Thank you for our musicians and their diligence, Lord Jesus. Thank you, God, for everything that has been said. Thank you, God, for even the moment that we had to touch each other, to greet each other, to pass your peace, and to be reminded that we are yet alive. And now, God, we thank you for bringing us to this place where we shall hear your word, trusting that it shall go forth and it shall never return back home. We pray, understanding, that lest the preacher comes, there can be no preaching in this place. So come on, Holy Ghost, and have a thine own way. Speak, Lord, for we, your people, are listening. Speak, Lord, we, your people, are listening. We pray this prayer and all of our prayers in the sweet, sweet name of the living God, we as your sons and your daughters, we say amen. 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 And amen. 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 So again, our text today comes from the gospel according to Matthew, Matthew 27 chapter, these two verses that I have lifted up for us, verses 47 and 49. Now for those of you that were not with us last week, we began a new sermon series that is entitled Putting the Passion Story into Perspective. Putting the Passion Story in Perspective. Now this is a series that we will be a series that we'll be participating in throughout this entire season of Lent. And just as a reminder, Lent is these 40 days. These 40 days between Ash Wednesday and Easter Sunday morning, excluding Sundays. And so over these next five weeks, we're going to take some time to sit with and to discuss the passion of Christ. Now if you would recall, I noted last week that the passion of Christ is this short period of time between Jesus' entry into Jerusalem, his arrest, his trial, his crucifixion, and ultimately his death on the cross. So, so literally, the passion is this last week that Jesus spent on earth. And for those of you who were not here last week, I, I said to us the reason why over the next five weeks, six, including last week, that we're focusing on the passion of Christ. It's because for so many of us, we, we come to church on Easter Sunday morning and we wave the palm branches and we say, Hosanna, Hosanna, blessed be the name of God. And then all week happens. Many of us don't get back to church. 
church for, for various reasons. We don't get to any Holy Week services. And then we arrive on Easter Sunday morning saying, He's alive, He's alive, He's alive. Happy Resurrection Sunday. And we haven't thought about all that the man endured all week long. And so we're going to take time and we're going to look at the plight of our Jesus. We're going to look at what happened that last week that Jesus walked on this earth. Now for those of you that were here last Sunday, you may remember that we began by trying to put the passion story and what led to Jesus' death into context. You might remember I preached a sermon where I talked about Jesus had been preaching and teaching and he was being obedient to the will and the way of God. And, and then it got to a point, he had been doing this for three years, where scripture says in the gospel of Luke that Jesus set his face towards Jerusalem. That Jesus makes a conscious and intentional decision to go to the city where the prophecy of his and his mocking and his death is going to occur. Well, today, today and over the next several weeks leading to Easter, our sermon context, the place, the springboard that we will leap from every Sunday when we come here is that Jesus is now in Jerusalem. He is in the holy city. He has made the trip. He is in the and we're going to explore what happens, particularly several of the conversations and the words that come out of people's mouths now that Jesus is meeting his fate as a crucified man.
those were long, long gone, having now been replaced by exclamations of perverse curiosity. Jesus' cry of despair to God is, is misunderstood by, by some nearby to be addressed to Elijah, and that prickles their curiosity. Huh. Wonder is Elijah going to come? Maybe this man really is the chosen one after all and, and hoping to see something more than they go and tell somebody else. Come on, somebody. We want to see what's going on, but do we ever help in the situation? But just hoping to see if something worthy to tell somebody else about later, they go and they feel a sponge of wine and they extend it to him in his being very and they do it, of course, not from desire to see, to ease his suffering, but they hope that he will endure a little longer so that they can see if Elijah will come. That writer goes on, he said, I love to say that we have matured just a little bit. I love to say that we have matured beyond such unholy fascination. Programs, they now name 
And by God's grace, I pray that we, that you, that I may be helped when we become the sufferers. Because we live long enough, we all are going to have something in this life where we're going to need somebody to help us. You're going to need somebody to help you along the way. May we not be bystanders, but may we be the kind of people that will offer comfort in the midst of misery. In the name of the Father, in the name of the Son, in the name of the blessed Holy Spirit, the people of God, so say amen. 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 And amen.